Beyond Silicon Valley, Southern California is becoming a hub for technology. From Snapchat to Tinder, some of tech's hottest apps are based in LA. Mark Suster, managing partner at Upfront Ventures, is a leader in SoCal's tech space, and he is joining us on TechCrunch today. You aren't from LA. You're actually from Northern California. That's true. But, but you've become one of the most prominent names in LA tech. Why LA? What, what kind of opportunity do you see there? Well, first of all, uh, I'm very technical. I started my career as a software programmer. Um, and so moving to LA, I had some apprehension. But here's the thing you need to know about LA. I mean, stating the obvious, it's the second largest city in the country, 16 million people versus 7 million in Silicon Valley, in the greater Silicon Valley. Um, but we also graduate more engineers in LA than anywhere else in the country. We have more top 25 engineering programs than anywhere else in the country. And what you have in LA is this great uh, mix, mix between like, creative talent and technical talent. And it didn't like, if you go back 10 years, it wasn't good enough because we were in the infrastructure phase of building the internet. So the companies that were successful were like database companies and browsers and caching software and hardware and Cisco and everything else. But now that you've got this platform, what's more valuable is the stuff that rides on top of the platform. And what is that? It's content, it's commerce, and it's communication platforms. And I call it the three C's. And LA is a fantastic market because of our creative talent for those three C's. So for me, it just became this amazing opportunity. Yeah, the creative talent. I, there's the whole entertainment industry there. And you've That's mentioned true. that you are involved with video. You had Maker Studios, which was yep. acquired for a lot of money. So. Um, do you find that the entertainment community and tech are, are starting to merge together? I do. The thing many viewers may not know and maybe somewhat ironic is we're on TV now, we're <laughs> filming. Americans watch 5.3 hours of television per day, 5.3. And a lot. If, <laughs> if you look back over the last 40 or 50 years, patterns haven't gone down. Video consumption hasn't gone down. Why? As human beings, we're storytellers. We're very visual people. We're used to sitting around the fire and telling stories. So video is a great medium for that. And if you accept that the video consumption patterns aren't going to go down, you have to accept that the internet is largely going to become a video platform. And so really it's become the rise of alternate forms of video. That started with YouTube. We know also now there's Vine. There's Snapchat, there's Facebook video, there's Instagram video, and there's this explosion now of new creators and new platforms, and that's only gonna continue. And you focus a lot on early stage, which I think would be challenging, because a lot of these businesses are really just ideas that haven't really been put into, uh, haven't, haven't really been realized just yet. How much of a business plan do you like to see in place when you're investing? Well, 90% of all investments we do are seed or A round. So our average first check size is three and a half million dollars. Usually the companies we're backing have either no revenue or very limited revenue. So what is it we're investing in? Of course I want to see a business plan, which is what is your product? What do you plan to sell? Through which channels? How do you plan to price it? How do you plan to acquire customers? I mean, we want to have a business discussion and a product discussion. But I like to say 70% of my investment decision is the individual. It's the person. I'm trying to decide. Are you an individual as you face adversity, as your product isn't selling, that really can innovate? And so that's way more my decision than any piece of paper. And so you've probably heard, but there's talk of a bubble. Yep. And um, a lot of that is impacting the later stage first, but of course it trickles down to a certain extent. How much is that impacting your decisions? Obviously great opportunities, great companies can still be built in difficult times, but are you being a little bit more cautious with your investments right now, or how are you looking at things? People get so much anxiety over the word bubble. That's true. A bubble by definition is when people pay greatly in excess of the value of an asset relative to the underlying value of the asset. And by any definition, we've been in a funding bubble for years. But leave that to the side. What's happened is 10 years ago, for every dollar that a VC raised from our investors, a dollar went into startup companies. In the last two years, for every dollar a VC has raised, two and a half dollars went into startup companies. <laughs> and that's because hedge funds, mutual funds, corporate investors, crowdfunding, all this money went in. And when you have a massive increase of supply of capital, 
undoubtedly valuations go up and you end up with overfunding. So if you look at it in the last three years alone, median valuations went up by 3x. That's just not sustainable. And in Q4, it went off a cliff and valuations went down massively in Q4. So I pulled venture capital firms to ask them what they think is gonna happen in 2016. I asked 157 VC firms, 91% said prices are dropping for private investments and 30% said they're gonna drop significantly in 2016. So a lot of companies that have gone public have, have struggled, and part of it also comes from a different philosophy that public investors have. Uh, VCs tend to be more big picture, as you know. They're, they're not as focused on profitability, especially not early stage, which, which you shouldn't be. But are you taking that into consideration? Are you rethinking your investment strategy, or is that really more for the later guys to figure out? I think there were a lot of naive investors in the last four or five years that believed that the underlying value of private companies had no relationship to the value of public companies. And of course, that's hogwash. I mean, these things are correlated. Um, I don't think you can say per se that public companies have struggled. What you can say is that valuations have gone down massively. But let's take LinkedIn. Okay, LinkedIn went down almost 50% in value. Yeah. From LinkedIn's, yeah. LinkedIn's uh, value is still four and a half times 2016 revenue. Okay, in the peak, SaaS companies were getting 12 and a half times forward revenue. Now, if you look over a six, seven, eight year time horizon, the history says SaaS and software companies get anywhere between 3.8 to 4.5 times forward revenue. So what you really saw was a massive overvaluation of SaaS based companies for the last two or three years. And really what we call it in investing is a reversion to the mean. You know, The valuations were high, they've come back to the historical norms. So we could call that failure, or we could just say that companies were overvalued for the last two years. So you seem optimistic, maybe cautiously optimistic. So, well, thank you so much for joining Thanks Mark's for sister. Having me.